Hello and welcome to the EcomOps podcast. My name is Norbert and today I'm talking to Chris White. Hi, Chris. Hey. Hey, great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, it's it's amazing. So today we have a very cool um, e-commerce store owner and he's uh, owning the site Shinesty. And uh, when I visited the website, the web shop uh, a few minutes ago, uh, the first thing I saw is deck your balls. <laughs> now, tell me something about it, Chris, please. <laughs> you know, we're just trying to take care of your balls. They're, they're important. Yeah, sure. They need to be taken care of, especially during the holidays. You don't want to neglect your, uh, <laughs> your very important uh, mem- part of your body. So, yeah. you know, just trying to bring a little levity and a little humor into people's lives, especially uh, important, especially in years like this. Yeah, I I fully need to agree. And it's really great. You need to visit that web store. There's a video running and you need to laugh and you are uh, directly into that store and you want to purchase something. So I'm pretty sure that I will browse through it afterwards (laughs) as well. Um, Chris, how did you get into e-commerce? Tell me a bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So we started the company about six years ago. Before that, I had not been in e-commerce at all. Um, I had been in apparel. I'd worked in apparel, but Mm -hmm. in more of uh, a traditional type of apparel uh, retail business. And so Mm -hmm. I had not uh, done anything with e-commerce, but had done a little bit with digital. So I had had worked for a a technology company called SendGrid. It's an email infrastructure software company in the United States. Pretty big. Yeah. So yeah, we hadn't really done much. We wanted to launch a brand that would essentially provide product for what we call all of life social moments. So anytime you're having good times with good people and we wanted to mix that with a brand that would remind us of our friends, make people laugh, make people shake their heads one way or another, whether that's positive or negative, you definitely have a reaction when you see the brand. And that's the intention. So it should make you, it should make you feel something. It's not for everybody for sure, yep. but for the people that it is for, they like it. They like that, that sense of humor and that vibe a lot more. Fully understandable. So as I said, visit that store. Um, you've worked at SendGrid, right? Correct. Yeah. What did you do at SendGrid? I, I, did. I know SendGrid, we're using it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I started working there when there was about 50 employees Mm-hmm. Um, I got to stay through the time there was about 250 employees a couple years later. So I it was yeah, really wow. cool to watch that business grow and watch it really take off. I did sales and then I did ended up doing business development and then corporate development mm-hmm. for Sangrid. So uh, okay. really cool experience. Not not my favorite product just personally in the world. A cool product, okay. super awesome, uh, high functioning product. Obviously, they've had a lot of business success. Um, but for me personally, I was a little more interested in more consumer facing mm-hmm. stuff. And so that kind of led me to e-commerce and led me to launching a brand on the internet. Yeah, got it. Um, what's your current e-com stack? So we use a lot. We, we probably have about 30 pieces of software total, but if we want to go over the main ones, we use Shopify, yep. we use NetSuite for our ERP. We have a custom RMA. We're about to actually start using a company called Loop for returns. Mm-hmm. For our warehouse, we use a company called RF Smart. We use a company called Shiphawk for like shipping ratings and things like mm-hmm. that. And then in terms of like internal ops, we use Slack, Monday.com for project management, um, namely for payroll. That's that's not a uh, that's not I'm I'm not a it's not an advertisement for any of those companies. No, I, no, no, I, I, definitely uh, not. But the listeners of this podcast really want to know everything about e-commerce. So operations is of course most important and knowing someone who is uh, successful with a store and the tools they use is always a good thing yeah so um why do you use shopify tell tell us a bit about why why do you use shopify yeah we started using shopify about six years ago yeah you know i think at the time it was probably a closer decision to choose between shopify and big commerce and woocommerce but as like shopify just had great success and has had resources plowed into that um into that company i think it's become the clear leader and i i don't really see a any reason now why we would switch uh to something else at this point um i will say at the time probably the choice was more between like magento and shopify and so we didn't want to have the complexity of having to have multiple web developers 
Um, and, you know, just having that complexity in the business wasn't really where we were trying to innovate. Shopify has been really nice because it handles the tech, a lot of the tech for you, um, yeah. allowing you to focus on building a brand, on marketing, on building a community, the more important pieces uh, of the brand, the real differentiators and, and kind of uh, automate the, the tech stack or at least a big part of the tech stack for yeah. online shopping carts and managing your business. And the goods that you sell, um, are they all, um, did, did you all um, produce them or is it uh, just reselling, uh, finding good to, tool, uh, good, uh, good underwear and, and, and uh, try to sell it? Or, or do you um, really have designers and think about the products? Yeah, we, so we design and manufacture all of our own products. Uh -huh. uh, well, that's not true. I guess about 95%. We do work okay. with some other brands. Um, that kind of resonate with our customer bases for other products that we don't make like sunglasses and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we, but we design, manufacture and design about 95% of what we sell. Um, so yeah, we have in-house design teams. We produce the product all over the world, everywhere from Asia to Eastern Europe to some in Los Angeles, um, some in Central America, just depending on the product. So yeah, we have a pretty robust do you, size. Do you ship worldwide or are you just in the US? Currently, we ship in the U.S., we ship to Europe, we ship to Canada, and we ship to Australia. Mm, wow, that's that's much. And all the goods come from the U.S., so do you ship directly from the U.S. even to Europe, or do you have uh, warehouses here in Europe as well? As of now, we ship everything directly from the U.S. We are looking oh. to expand to open a warehouse, ah, and make things awesome. a little faster for our European customers. And when you produce your products yourself and when you, really, when you design them, um, do you also sell on marketplaces? Is this a channel for you? Currently not. So currently oh, we have really? a very, we, well, I'll caveat that with saying we just kind of started to experiment for the very first time on Amazon, selling a couple yeah. of views on there. Um, but yeah, no, to date, we have not done any marketplace um, sales. Everything's coming from our website. So it's something we, we intend to explore and, and you know, continue to look into probably next year. But as at this moment, no, most almost 99.5% of all our sales are coming from our website. So you do a lot of online marketing or you have a good customer base that spread the word? Yeah, both. Um, you know, we do a lot of paid advertising on Facebook, on yeah. Google, on Instagram, kind of the basics that most. I think it's a perfect product for, for, for Facebook and, and Instagram. Yeah, it's very visual. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, harder to describe on a podcast, but if you, you just kind of have to see it on the website. When you see it, you'll understand. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and do, do you get, do, do your ads get approved right away or do you need a few runs before they really run? <laughs> we've had some, uh, we've definitely had some, some uh, multiple, many, many times where our ads have been flagged for inappropriate yeah. content, but usually we're able to get them, get them through. Yeah. This well, it's, everything, everything is you three, so that's cool. Um, yeah, do you have any specific person in your team that is focusing on operations? Yeah, actually, so we have, uh, we probably break our operations team into, I guess I'd call it four main teams. Mm -hmm. So those teams would be distribution. So we do run our own fulfillment center. So we don't have a 3PL. Um, we do it ourselves. So we have our own 25,000 square foot distribution center in Denver, Colorado. It's where we ship everything out of. So we have a team that runs that side of the business. Uh, we have a team that we call internal operations. And so that is really kind of uh, data integrity, making sure our flows are working, uh, you know, Shopify, our ERP, NetSuite, making sure that everything's accurate in there, receiving product in accurately, making sure everything goes into our systems. Properly, we have our merchandising team, which is really like inventory planning, um, skew mix, choosing what product is going in where and how much of that to buy. And then we have logistics, which is really uh, shipping product in from our manufacturers and getting it out to our customers. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of how we work. And each one of those groups really has like a leader, yeah. uh, director that works for us. Okay, great. And and uh, and what role, um, at least if any, does automation play in your company? Yeah, big role. And and you know we continue to uh, we continue to invest in that. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, you know the more you can automate, the more you can focus on the big 
hairy issues and not have to worry about, um, you know, manual data entry type uh, roles and responsibilities within the company. So, yeah, I mean, we're always trying, I'm not, I won't say we're perfect at it, but we're always trying to um, build automations, build flows in Shopify, build flows in NetSuite um, to automate some of our, uh, some of our processes that we have to do on the day to day. And do you think it will get more important in the future or uh, is automation something that uh, is at its limits? No, I think definitely more important. Like, so for us, for example, it, it generally you get to the point as you scale your operation, you, you can yeah. decide whether you want to hire a lot more people or you want to invest in automation. And um, so for us, you know, we would like to hire people to work on big problems and, uh, and use technology or use automation to, kind of do that more grindy type responsibilities. So just an example, like we're investing right now in an inventory planning software system. So that will take our inventory planning, which we currently do in Excel and put it into directly into our ERP, which will automate purchase orders from our vendors when we need restocks based on days of supply, based on turn times and things like that. And that will essentially, you know, clear up a whole person's job. And so that person will be freed up to work on Uh, other bigger projects and bigger problems with the business, which will be great for, for that person and for the company. So automation as the key to grow, um, as I said, because it's really hard to find good people um, and to, to, to have enough people in the team that are really skilled enough. And if you really block the time of someone uh, that you could automate and you better put it on a, uh, put the person on another position uh, with another role to grow the company, it's always the better solution, I think. Um, the, uh, people having have are 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 being afraid um, that automation will kill the job. Uh, I think this this won't happen. So automation no, will not uh, kill I mean, jobs, yeah. at least not in this branch, not least in this niche area. Totally. Uh, you know, for example, like that person that was having to manually write purchase orders. Now that we can invest in that system, that person can now use their their analysis to be thinking about how we open a European distribution center and how we yeah. ship our goods, right? Uh, how we split our goods and doing that more high level, more business needle moving type stuff. It's good for that, that employee as well. That employee is furthering their skills uh, and making themselves more valuable for them, for their careers. Yeah. What will it def uh, your ops team be focused in the next year? Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, lots of stuff. I would say, We, in the next year, we are looking at like that kind of uh, multi-distribution center fulfillment um, opportunity. So basically having distribution centers that are closer to our customers, instead of shipping it all from one central location, being able to locate product, uh, whether that's on the East Coast and West Coast of the United States or in Europe or in Canada, um, being able to essentially get product to people faster um, simply by changing where we have our uh, goods fulfilling out of. So that's a big project for sure. Um, you know, I think we are continuously investing in making our processes better um, operationally. So every time we can automate a click even um, in our WMS system and our shipping software where our uh, warehouse workers are, are that are using on a daily basis, anytime we can automate a click, I know that I can save 10 cents and that 10 cents is on every single order in perpetuity. Uh, and that adds up really quickly. And so it's, it's um, really great to look at something like this. Uh, one click is 10 cents. This is, yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's uh, yeah. so true. Um, and, you know, maybe that costs you $10,000 in developer time to fix, yeah. but you can clearly do the math on that and see the ROI. Yeah. You have thousands of orders a day yeah. that adds up really quickly. And um, may I ask you, you need not answer that question, but roundabout, how many parcels do you ship per month? Um, yeah, I mean, we ship like on average between two and 3000 a month or sorry, a yeah. day, a uh, day. Yeah. Yeah, a day. And we ship mo a lot more than that during the holidays, but generally like, <laughs> yeah. between two and 3000, like if you're looking at the non holiday 10 months of the year. Yeah, this is really, this is a very stable and, 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 and good income, um, for, 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 uh, an online store. So something to really look at. Uh, finding yeah. the right way. Um, who has taught you so much about e-commerce? <laughs> That's a good question. I think, uh, honestly, <laughs> if, I, yeah, if I had to say that someone has taught me, 
I think that I would have to say Google, honestly, like, yeah. you know, I, th- I think they're really good outlets out there for, mm. you know, technical information. I'm a member of a, a forum called ecommercefuel.com, mm-hmm. which has been pretty valuable as we've grown. Um, but like, honestly, you can learn so much from Google, from Reddit, from yeah. Aura, from little like holes. And, and really it's just like searching and you can find it. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely have, as over this last six years built a pretty good group of peers and it's good to have a group of peers of five or six peers that are, you know, similar size to you and with similar aspirations of growing their businesses. Cause you do pick up on certain things and learn um, and you can ping and ping questions off of those, those peers. But, but number one MVP has got to be Google and just mm-hmm. doing research on the internet. I mean, we have such a advantage over our parents when they didn't have access to that. They couldn't learn anything on demand. So um, that's been by far the most helpful thing is just having a question and figuring it out for yourself. Typically, this is my last question. So it, um, uh, normally we're finished now, but I have one additional question. Um, right. I'm really, really curious about. Um, you said that you worked at, um, at SendGrid and, uh, and that you started the e-com business then and you learned so much from Google. And now... You ship after six years doing this. You ship two or three thousand packages per day. This is such a huge growth, and I would be interested in how did you manage to start? So, did did you have? Um, is it Bootstrap? Did you have an investor? Was your web store um, right away what it is now, or mm-hmm. how did you find the first one hundred customers and then the first one thousand customers? And when yeah. did it really boom? Yeah, no, definitely it was not always the way it is now. Um, when if you're when you're just starting out, you have to be really patient with yourself because yeah, you know, success and growth really does build on itself, and it, the snowball effect is real. So the bigger the snowball is, the faster it rolls downhill, and the more uh, momentum it picks up. You know, at the very beginning, we actually started by selling vintage clothing, so we okay. did make any of our own product. And we actually only had one unit of every product that we sold on our website. And that was just a way to kind of test out the market and see, Hey, is this something customers are interested in? Great. If so, we'll take it to step two. Um, so at first, when we found our first hundred customers, it was really manual. Honestly, we were just grinding on Instagram, trying to put out content (laughs) that would make people laugh. Um, and hopefully, you know, getting some, um, customers from that content that would make that was humorous and, you know, focused around kind of the seasonal holiday calendar. Um, a thousand customers, first thousand customers probably came from Facebook uh, marketing and just making ads that resonated with people. So, you know, ads, we, we always try to make ads that are really funny because mm-hmm. our perspective is if we can entertain you first and sell, sell to you second, we'll have a better chance of uh, number one, reducing customer acquisition costs by making people laugh. So even if you're not interested in the product, you might tag your friend because it's a funny ad. Um, And that definitely did work for us. Um, And yeah, we kind of went from there by really taking care of all of our customers when they were, once, once we uh, had them in our community, in our CRM, which we consider owning their email address, um, making sure that we nurtured that with like high quality content. And gave them content that was really high quality and not just spammy, hey, 20% off, buy our stuff. Um, giving them a reason to open our emails besides just buying. Okay. So, you know, that was kind of our approach. And and that does, that, that's slow. That's a slow approach at first, for sure. Um, well, six years and that, that huge amount of packages is not slow, but um, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's really it cool. seems slow at the beginning. It seems like it's been yeah. way more than six years, right? It seems like it's been 20 years. Uh, oh yeah i can understand that really (laughs) so chris really thank you so much it was a great interview um and and i think what what we can really learn is uh, don't give up make people's love and give a meaningful content so just these typical newsletters with 20 percent off are really out it comes to the inbox and you forget about it uh just make people love and give a good content and automate what you can to let the people that work for you do the jobs that make you grow. Agreed, 100%. We're very well put, Norbert. (laughs) Perfect. Thank you so much. Talk soon and good luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.
Bye. Bye.